Hi everyone, and thanks again for joining me. Today I'm going to be covering the much-requested Giant Maestro suspension, and in particular, the Giant Rain. However, to make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to be comparing the 27 Half Rain to its 29er brother. Are you sacrificing something by choosing one over the other? Stay tuned to find out. Let's start off by looking at some brief specs of the two bikes. The 27 Half Wheel bike has 160mm of travel out back and 170mm up front, with a 64.5 degree head tube angle and a 72.5 degree seat tube angle. The 29er version by comparison only has 146 millimeters of rear travel and 160 up front, with a slightly steeper head tube angle at 65 degrees and a much steeper seat tube angle at 76.8 degrees. Off the top of my head, there could be a couple reasons for this, including making space for the large rear wheel to go through its travel and improving the pedaling geometry by placing the rider further over the bottom bracket. Before I go any further, I should quickly address the topic of whether the Maestro suspension is the same as the DW Link suspension. There was a huge lawsuit over it after all. I'll provide some more details throughout the video, but the short answer in my opinion is no. Each seem to have distinctive suspension characteristics, at least in 2020. Diving into the details of the Giant Rain, our analysis will begin with the braking and acceleration characteristics. For some more details on how these are calculated, make sure to check out my analysis of the Scott Ransom by clicking in the top right. As the rain cycles through its travel, the anti-rise remains consistently much lower than many bikes that I've looked at, with the 29er having a slightly lower anti-rise than even its 27 half brother. What this equates to is two bikes with very active suspension during braking, the 29er being even more active than the 27 half but also ones that are likely to be able to pitch forward during braking, meaning more weight over the front wheels during steep descents. How does all this compare to a DW Link suspension? A quick comparison to the Ibis Ripmo shows significantly higher anti-rise values and consequently a bike that will remain more level during braking. Our comparison between the two reins continues by looking at the anti-squat, which gives an indication of pedaling efficiency. While both bikes have very high anti-squat to begin with, the differences between the 29 and 27 half become most evident during the second half of the travel, where the 27 half continues to fall to less than 50%, while the 29er levels off to around 75%. This is likely to result in very good pedaling efficiency for both bikes due to the high initial anti-squat values, but the lower anti-squat values deeper in the travel are going to keep the overall pedal kickback within a reasonable range. Translating that to suspension response, it means that the small bump compliance may not be as good as other bikes in the initial part of their travel because of the high chain force interaction with the suspension during this part, but the lower anti-squat values deeper in the travel means that the suspensions will start becoming more plush the deeper you go. Comparing the 27 half to the 29er, it becomes apparent that the 29er is meant to remain a more efficient peddler throughout its travel, while the 27 half is meant to be let loose on the big stuff and comfortably absorb it. Looking back at the Ripmo again quickly with its DW Link suspension, one will notice that the anti-squat stays higher for longer, providing slightly better peddling efficiency overall. Continuing the analysis leads us to the kinematics of each suspension design, which compares wheel movement to shock movement. Both giants show a progressive start to their leverage ratios that flatten out deeper in their travels. This is definitely a signature of the Maestro suspension, as all of the bikes seem to exhibit this response. This flattening in the second half of the travel is going to mean that running a coil shock without a progressive coil is probably not the best idea for this bike, as the frame does not provide as much of a progressive response as many other bikes. Instead, Giant is relying on the air shock to provide ramp up characteristics to aid in the bottom out prevention on their frames. Comparing the 27 half to the 29er, I should mention that due to the lower overall leverage ratio on the 29er, one is able to run slightly lower pressures in the shock, which might be a good thing if you're a heavier rider, where you might be nearing the pressure limits of a particular shock. It might also mean that the 27 half has slightly better small bump sensitivity due to the higher leverage ratio that is able to more easily overcome the friction present in the shock. Interestingly, if I quickly compare these two bikes to the Ripmo once again, one will notice a very similar leverage ratio curve for this DW Link design. When comparing the wheel path and chain growth of the two giant reins, one will notice a smooth arc around a point just behind the top of the front chain ring for both bikes, with the 27 half having a slightly smaller radius arc. Thus, despite having 14mm more travel in the 27 half bike, the overall chain growth isn't any different between the two bikes, being around 24mm or 5.5%. This is about average for a bike in the enduro category, including the Ripmo, which surprisingly has an identical chain growth as the Rain. This results in a pedal kickback for the Rain with a 50-30 and 25-30 gear combination as shown. If you haven't already seen my video looking at the pedal kickback and whether you should care about it, make sure to click the link in the top right. 
So what is my conclusion on the giant rain and Maestro's suspension in general? And what is each version of the spike better suited to? Firstly, the very low anti-rise of both bikes will result in very active braking, but also allow pitching forward of the bike while braking due to rider weight transfer. The slightly higher anti-rise of the 27 half means that it might be slightly better suited to steeper trails, but the difference won't be huge between these two bikes. Secondly, the anti-squat of both bikes is really high to begin with and decreases significantly through their travels. This is going to result in excellent pedaling efficiency with no pedal bob during the first part of the travel, but also a very active suspension deeper in the travel, albeit with a higher chance of pedal bob. Given the higher overall anti-squat of the 29er, it's going to be a better pedaler and probably better suited for longer enduro style rides, or rides where there isn't a shuttle to take you to the top of the hill. However, the 27 half is going to be more lively due to the smaller tires and more supple suspension deeper in its travel. Thirdly, the kinematics of both suspensions is progressive at first, but linear near the end, meaning that both suspensions rely on the air shock to provide bottom out resistance rather than the frame design. Fourth, the chain growth, wheel path, and pedal kickback of these bikes is about average for an enduro bike. Finally, how does the Maestro suspension compare with the DW Link design? Using the Ripmo as the representative DW Link design, one will notice large differences in anti rise and anti squat, while the leverage ratios and train growth are almost the same. So similar in their linkage designs, but very different bike feel. Thanks again for joining me and hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please make sure to subscribe and like the video. And remember, if you want to support the channel, make sure to head over to my Patreon page or donate directly to me via PayPal using the links down below. Until next time, happy trails.